It's no different than when you think a football or basketball coach prepares for the big game. They've got a basic, hey, here's the guys we need to look for. Here's the, you know, the, 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 the schemes they like to run and things like that. Here's the, you know, the, their tendencies in terms of they like, they're more of a pass team or more of a run team or this team's fast break or they're more of a 2-3 defense. Your plan is so that you can basically say, okay, here's what my abilities are. Here's my skill set. Here's what we know about the course. How can I take those things and maximize my potential to give myself the best chance to medal, win, whatever the case may be, whatever your goal is. So you basically start from where your goal is. So if, let's say Pardon's goal, and I'm, I'm not trying to speak for him, let's say Pardon's goal is top three. Well, he has to understand what are his opponents, you know, what are they capable of? What's the course gonna give him? Because he's competing against himself the course, his opponents, um, you know, the clock. I mean, there's all these different things you're competing with when you're running a race. How can I maximize my potential to benefit where I want to finish up in terms of my goal? Knowing the course in terms of the strategy as well, uh, you're going to want to rehearse as best you can in the environment that you live in what the course is going to be like, the undulations, the turns and things like that. So you know, okay, you kind of take the guesswork out of when you get there, it's more like you're on as much autopilot as you can be. Obviously, the competitors throw in a lot of their own, uh, you know, unique uh, issues in terms of what they're going to do. Are they, you know, someone surges at mile five versus someone surging at mile 15 or, you know, you've got some person who we're not expecting to even be in the contenders at the end. Like you'll see at the Boston Marathon all the time, someone just takes off at the beginning because they want to be on TV and get their, you know, 15 minutes of fame or whatever, and then they disappear later on. Is that a serious threat? Is that not? I mean, those are all things you have to kind of study, know who your competitors are. Again, back to Pardon and the elite level folks, what they're going to be doing is, okay, where am I going to be able to make my move? Who are the competitors? What are some of their tendencies? Because in marathon, I mean, distance runners, they'll study each other just as much as, a, you know, a student's going to be studying for a class. I mean, they've got to know what's going to be on this test, if you will, and the final exam is the, you know, the Olympic marathon. And so they're, they want to take all the guesswork they can. So again, knowing as close as you can what the temperature may be that day, that's going to dictate to you, even though they're all going to just be wearing their, their singlets and whatnot for their country, if for some reason, let's say it was going to be a little cold and windy, they're going to want to maybe prepare for that. You know, they may want to bring gloves because you can always take something off, but you can't put it back on once the race starts. So again, just trying to assess what those things are in terms of when it comes down to, you know, when he's going to make a move and things like that. I think with Pardon, or with any elite marathoner, unless you are one of the folks that's run one of the faster times in there, you're gonna basically be reacting to what other folks are going to do. Putting yourself in situations like that in shorter distance races is a great way to practice for that because you can't run a marathon every other weekend to practice for something like that. But doing 5Ks, 10Ks, 12Ks, 10 milers, things like that, half marathons, is a great way to practice the skill of racing because Inevitably, every race and every kind of condition is always different. And I think that's the thing that, you know, you want to do going into something like this. When you're looking at someone like, say, like Pardon, for example, he's going to be looking at fueling and hydration. That's a big part of his strategy. When is he going to take those things? What can he do in terms of what, you know, his body will handle and things like that? And let's say the average marathoner probably stores somewhere between 2,000 and 2,500 calories in their body you're gonna deplete, you know, at least in terms of race readiness, you're gonna deplete most of that before the race is over. I mean, in a marathon, you're probably gonna burn upwards of 3,000 calories. So you've, the planning of that is gonna be helping you fight off the, you know, kind of the wall, if you will, or kind of the degradation in terms of your performance as long as you can. So having some sort of electrolytes in your drink um, in addition, obviously, you know, to consuming water, but having some electrolytes in there so you can fight off cramps, you can kind of keep the cells and the muscles lubricated and, and working properly, um, the gels and stuff like that. Taking them sometimes earlier, it seems kind of counterintuitive, but taking them earlier while you still have some calories in there so they can start slowly, because again, blood rushes away from your gut, so you're not digesting food like you would if you're just at rest and eating a meal normally having that in there so it's got more time to kind of slowly digest and then it's going to be easy on the stomach you can start kind of slowly kind of rebuilding some of those reserves 
that's going to be a big key thing. So you want to practice when those things are going to be, when you think that's going to be most beneficial for you. Also too, it sounds easy enough, but dr trying to drink water while you're running, I mean, you can choke yourself a little bit while you're doing this. So you've got to really practice it. Again, he'll probably be taking his beverages from a water bottle, which is a little easier, but still, you know, doing that and trying to run and maintain a 510 to 515 pace is no easy feat. It's just no different than, you know, I mean, if you've run races before, you understand the little pinch and pour. I mean, you know, you can either get it all over you or you can get it in you, one of the two things. And, you know, as a, a nutritionist once told me, it's better in you than on you. So, I mean, I think that's the thing is you've got to practice how you can get the most bang for your buck when you're doing those things.